Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good that I'm able to start the recording. There's some technical. OK. So how how are you doing? Today we are going to uh, we are going to study on the fifth fifth chapter from the book of Code of Honor, and I would request each one to read the scriptures. Okay, each one to be ready with the scriptures, and when the turn comes, I would request each one to take and read the scriptures. Okay. So we have been addressing on uh, some of the various areas of importance for those of us involved in the Christian ministry. And these things that we have been talking about, of course, are useful and relevant, not only for those of us in ministry, but on some of those we learn to walk with God as believer and grow in our faith. So we have uh, touched upon a few areas of importance. And today, we want to address the area of preaching and ministering the word of God, and just address certain areas that we need to be careful about uh, certain boundaries that we need to set, and uh, uh, certain areas that we need to safeguard that, uh, you know, and be cautious about when it comes to preaching the word of God. and. Um, as uh, God has called us to handle the word of God and uh, and handle the word in such a way with reverence to build the ministry, to build the people. And the word of God is powerful when we preach it, when we release it, because it penetrates the heart and lives of people and it brings about change and brings about transformation. So with the word of God being so powerful, we need to and it is an honor and privilege for us as ministers of God to preach and teach the word of God. Um, yet, what we see happening around the churches and the various places is that sometimes uh, we know the minister of the word of God becomes so diluted. Sometimes it's more than just a little pep talk or a little motivational message that we can hardly tell the difference between somebody is teaching the word of God or uh, uh, somebody is actually uh, supposed to be preaching. For the word of God, um, you know, needs to be taught. And it should not be a pep talk or a motivational message. And the word of God should bring the truth out to, uh, you know, to transform the heart, uh, to cause the people know the power in the word. It shouldn't be like just a pep talk or a feel good message or, um, you know, a big, huge entertainment on a Sunday morning. But then it should transform lives. It should reveal the truth of the word. So today we uh, we are going to address on this topic. We need to be because we need to be aware of the digression in the area, or uh, what's happening when it comes to preaching and teaching the word of God, uh, because we are really called to do that. And are we doing that? We need to preach the cross because that's the central message. We should not be compromising on the truth. We need to preach the whole counsel of God and the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, because without cross, without uh, a repentance or call to repentance, uh, we cannot teach the word of God because that's the central message of Christianity and our Christian faith. And so we must stay with good things that are absolutely important to the word of God. So as we begin with a very basic thing concerning the preaching of God's word, the first is this, that we are called to establish people in God's word. And that's very important. That, uh, you know, uh, when we teach and preach, our goal is to get people established in the whole counsel of God. The word of God. Can I request one of us to please turn to Acts chapter 20, verse 32, please? 
Acts 20.32 So now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance, inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Amen. So here we see Apostle Paul saying, and he's commanding us to God, to his word. This word is able to build us up. This word is able to give us an inheritance on those who are sanctified by faith. So it's important for us to ensure that through our preaching and teaching, that people are established in the word of God. And people need to know what the word says. People need to know the truth. And we need to disciple in the truth. Because it's that truth that's going to liberate and set them free from all kinds of bondage and problem and addiction. So we must focus on having people established in the word of God through our preaching and teaching. Also, in our preaching and teaching, it is important for us to be pure, be reverent, be genuine, be wholesome in the ministry of God's word. Sometimes be held with the reverence or we, have, we got to do with purity and not just contaminating the word of God, but things are not supposed to be in, its, uh, in the way it is. But it's got to be genuine. It's got to be wholesome. Can I request one of us to please turn to Book of Titus, Chapter 2, Verse 7 to 8, please? Titus, Chapter 2, Verse 7 to 8. In all things showing yourself to be pattern of God in, of good works, in doctrine showing integrity, reverence, income incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. So here we see uh, he's telling Titus, Titus, in your teaching, I want you to have integrity. I want you to have reverence. I want you to have uh, inter. Uh, inter What's that word? You know, I want you to have integrity. That means keep it pure. I want it to be a sound speech, wholesome. Unfortunately, we find the people in pulpit not living up to that standard, but that we are called to. When it comes to the teaching of the ministry of God's word, sometimes we see people use language that is so shameful that is not clean. And they call, you know, it's a process of communicating the word. And we need to be very careful on that. We should use the right words, right speech in our communication when we are teaching and preaching the word of God. Speech is very important. It should be incorruptible. So the doctrine of God and, uh, you know, when we teach, we need to teach it with reverence with integrity and in our communication of scripture and the communication of the word of God needs to be very clear there should not be any contamination there should be reverence a language need to be good and clean and we need to handle the word of God with all reverence because it is the word of God and when we, especially delivering the word of God, we need to deliver it with all reverence. So another important thing that we would like to impress on our hearts today is that when we are preaching and teaching the word of God, we need to preach to impart and not to impress. See, our goal is communicating the word of God. And it's not to impress people not to impress them with our nice stories or impress them with our ability to communicate with the posh words, or not to impress them with whatever our goal may be. But we need to communicate the word of God or preach or teach the word of God, uh, keeping the impartation in our mind. 
impart the truth into the hearts of people impart uh, you know the counsel of god into the hearts of people because that has power to change them to transform them to uh, to make them what god want them to be so we need to see what god wants to do in their life and impart it to them as what god has asked us each one of us to do so uh, paul writes this in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 can i request one of us to please read second corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 for we are not as so many peddling the word of god but as sincerity but as from god we speak in the sight of god in christ so you we see paul saying that you know we don't peddle the word of god we don't uh, like to sugar coat the word or try to push it along with people lives no we don't do that but we speak god's word with sincerity as though he is speaking from god and as a way of speaking before god meaning there is a whole motivational preaching that god's word is it is to do right thing before god and as from god and not to impress people so as part of our teaching and preaching we must address difficult topics but must do it with love uh, because they are difficult in areas and and difficult topics that we need to address is uh, concerning to their day to day life life issues or practical things or uh, uh, the the challenges of people which they would be facing in their day to day life so we must be mindful when we are addressing such topics we need to do it with love as paul tells us in ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 to 15 can i request may one to please take up ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 to 15 please ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 to 15 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ amen amen so you always see that there are all kinds of winds of doctrine that blow across the body of Christ but Paul calls it saying look we must establish people in truth they must speak the truth in love so that god's truth addresses these difficult issues but do it with love of god we need to do it with love of god and also rightly divide the word and always maintain sound doctrine so when we had uh, when we bring the word of god it's important for us to make sure that we are teaching the sound doctrine we are correctly dividing the word of god make sure we double check on that and how we interpret the scripture is more important Uh, whether we are present, uh, whether we are presenting the whole doctrine, or we are searching across the scripture, is that relevant? Or we are not just taking one word out of context and bringing a message out of that, but that very message, what we preach, will stand the test of the entire scripture. We need to check on that. Is it? is that word is that message what we are about to bring to the people to the congregation is it in line with the word of god is it in harmony with the entire counsel of god we need to check on that and paul writes in the book of titus can i request one of us to please turn to titus chapter 2 verse 1 please
But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. So we see that Titus saying, when we are teaching the word or when we are preaching, what we preach and teach should be a sound doctrine. Another important aspect he is saying here is ministering the word of God is that we must learn to build precept upon precept. And that's the way God also deals with us. And I request one of us to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9 to 10, please. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from milk, those just drawn from the press. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Amen. 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 So here he's saying that you know how uh, you know, important is to teach the knowledge. You're going to teach them little by little. And you're going to, uh, you know, it must happen precept upon precept, line upon line, little by little. So, so when we are ministering the word of God, and we need to bring it, and when we want to give a great revelation, a lot of truth, release it in the right time, release it with the right amount, and release it, you know, the right place, especially in the pastoral setting when uh, we are trying to equip an entire congregation. Not all of them are ready to receive that word, to receive that revelation. So what we need to do, we need to release it line by line, precept by precept little by little. So what we're teaching and slowly build them up in the things of God, learn to bring a word in season. Always listen to what God wants to say in that season to the congregation or in the journey that the people are at that moment, at that time. So you may know a lot from scripture, but at this moment, what is the word of God? What God wants us to release it to the congregation, release it to the people. We need to be mindful of that when we bring the word in season. And now the important aspect uh, about ministering the word of God is validated about the revelation. So how we can validate the revelation that we have received before we can preach it. Before we can preach it, we may have to, you know, uh, check it with the word of God. We should not get very excited about this beautiful, wonderful uh, revelation and just go straight away and uh, share it with the congregation. But what we need to do is we need to double check. We need to double check. So how do we double check? We need to check with the word of God. Is it in aligned with the word of God? We should also check uh, the uh, uh, is the rest of the scriptures upholding the same message. And then we should also check with the body of Christ. Uh, uh, is everyone preaching the same thing? Because God will normally release the revelation to multiple people, the same truth speak being spoken by different people. So we need to check on that and then share it because in we uh, checking on that, we are on the safe ground and we can go ahead. Remember that the spirit and the word always agree. So uh, checking with the scripture, checking with the other scriptures, is it in line? And also seeing that the, the body of Christ, the other preachers, are they preaching with the same message on that particular um, scripture? When we check on that before we could deliver the message, it is actually for us, it's safety. And so if something has come to you from the spirit, a revelation, it will always agree with the written word of God. Agree with the word that 
uh, that's been given to us. And so the spirit and the word will always agree and not contradict. So uh, we can stay current in our preaching and teaching with the current revelation, the things that God has released to the body of Christ. But at the same time, we need to avoid some theological digression that we know sometimes in order to stay current, we say we tend to de digress of the main thing. So let the main thing of the word always be the main thing. That's the important of the word gives what the word of God can bring message to us. So in our preaching and teaching, our preaching and teaching should be the cross, which is the central message of our Christianity. It is very important for us to focus on that, uh, on that work that was completed by Jesus on the cross. And so we need to be um, careful on going off on a different tangent or teaching different things that are not really applicable. So we need to be very careful very uh, you know we need to pay pay great importance to that particular revelation when we check only if it is relevant we need to share it otherwise we need to just avoid such theological digression in our ministry another important thing of the ministry of the word is we must learn the way we overcome uh, every amplifying truth and this is especially important as a pastoral setting let's say we are pastoring a church with several people in it and there's a strange wind of doctrine blowing across our town across our city and that's been affecting many people how do we combat that error how will we find that every Way that, how to overcome that error. What we can do is we can just amplify the truth from the scripture. When we amplify the truth, we don't have to talk about that error that has been spreading like a wild forest fire across. But what we can do is we can just amplify the truth. We don't have to explain any error just by amplifying the truth. The truth gives them the better understanding. The truth will help each one of them to reject that untruth, reject that error and be safe. So this is one of the way how we can handle the error that spreads around is by just amplifying the truth in order to overcome every wind of error that may spread across. So, so as part of a teaching and preaching, it is important that we don't stand up behind the pulpit and now uh, we just deal with certain issues. We are dealing with the issues concerning what happens from the pulpit. And don't use the pulpit for flattery or exhortation or self-promotion. We don't do that. Don't, uh, we don't uh, uh, use pulpit to flatter a few people in the congregation or the audience so that they will, uh, you know, uh, get a good, they will get on, so that, you know, they will be on the good books. No, we don't do that. Uh, or we, uh, we flatter people to get big offerings or um, we may have some favor from some people. We don't use this pulpit time to flatter anyone or to exhort money from people. We don't do that from the pulpit. Doing things, uh, you know, for our use is not the right thing to use the pulpit. Pulpit uh, should be used only to minister the word of God, to glorify Jesus. And we should not give this pulpit time to devil. As we know, it is uh, shameful for us to, uh, as a preacher, standing up behind the pulpit and doing things that are not becoming, uh, that is not um, reverent in the sight of God. 
or using the pulpit even to criticize people or uh, getting into some political agendas or uh, you know uh, trying to promote business uh, others business or trying to promote their own personal agendas instead of staying with the ministry of the word of god so we need to be very cautious mindful of such things we should use the pulpit time only to minister the word of god exalt the name of jesus and him only and not to give the pulpit time to the devil so never give devil the pulpit time he is not worthy of that always use pulpit time to glorify god and do not draw people to ourselves we don't have to try to use the pulpit time to get people to follow us we should not allow the pulpit time to always glorify uh, we should use this time the pulpit time only to glorify god god and to point out jesus christ is the lord and these are some of the things that uh, you know we feel that are really important for us when it comes to ministering the word of god and so that we may stay focused in releasing god's word that will build up his people and his kingdom will come so i open to the class if you have any questions please do let us know Do you have any questions? Before we can move ahead, you can share if you have any questions or you would like to share or add. no ma'am okay others have you come across any such uh scenarios in your ministry that you would like to share how you handled it okay um can i request one of us to read romans 16 verse 17 to 18 please romans 16 verse 17 to 18 now i urge you brethren note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them for those who are such do not serve our lord jesus christ but their own belly and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple amen can one of you please turn to first corinthians chapter 10 verse 32 and 33 please First Corinthians chapter ten was thirty-two to thirty-three. Give no offense to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the Church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Amen. 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 So uh, while we, uh, you know, serve, we should be mindful of not causing any division or offense in the body of Christ. Well, Paul says that uh, he try, yes, as he pleases men in all things, not seeking his own profit, not but the profit of many. He he tries to serve them. Literally, he says that you know, as Jesus said, "I'm here to serve and not to be served." He tried to serve them. So, as a minister of God, we uh, need to preach to edify and build up the body of Christ. But we should not cause any offense or division among them. So, um, yes, we may not agree with another. Christian uh, denomination teaching or practices, but what we need to do is we need to be mindful of how we conduct ourselves. Are we conducting ourselves pleasing to the word? 
uh, as per the word, like we should not bring in any strife, any kind of division uh, in our ministry, in our teaching, in uh, in the way we conduct ourselves. You know, we need to be in peace with others. That's what Paul writes, as much as possible, stay in peace with others. So we have to remind ourselves to stay as we stay with preaching and teaching God's word. We need to conduct ourselves peaceful with everyone so that um, and we need to have this servant attitude towards others so when we preach and teach uh, it, it, there's no offense there's no division and people can receive the word with wholeheartedly so with this we complete this chapter and before we could uh, go to the next chapter we can take a time of break and we can come back after 15 minutes okay Okay, there's a question from Sid. Oh, there are many questions. Okay. Just give me a minute while I go through the questions. Elisha has asked, in our preaching of right doctrine, what do you do when you have discovered truth in scripture and it is not in an agreement with your destination, sorry, denomination? In our preaching of right doctrine, what do you do when you have discovered truth in scripture and it is not in agreement with your denomination? Yeah. Uh, in this case, what we can do? I keep it open to the class. Brother Subhashesh, Isaac, Divya, Roslyn, anyone can answer this question. Jeffina. Brother Abu Bakr. I think the question nice has job. already been answered. Yes, brother, you can answer it again. Just to address that question. Uh, I think actually the question is that uh, when we uh, discover some truth, that means actually we should stand with the truth because uh, here actually we are talking about uh, living a life according to the word of God, not through our denominations. So if uh, we say we have discovered the truth and at the same time, maybe we can uh, uh, take the guidance of our, uh, some actually elders, uh, those who are mentoring us, we can ask them if uh, some people, they... Uh, Two or more people, they said yes. Uh, maybe we can go ahead. But as uh, Elisha said, uh, that if he feels that he has discovered, if uh, no one also, I will say, if others they are not also encouraging or maybe to practice that one. But if he feels that it is from God, then I will say, okay, go with uh, the truth. Mm -hmm. Anyone else would like to add on to it? Can I yes. Share? Yes, please. To me, if I discover something in the Bible and go against the denomination, the church I'm attending, the mm -hmm. first and the first things I will do is to pray for our leaders to open these particular scriptures to them to to show them the reason why they must they should change. The doctrine and the denomination uh, on the one we ought to make amendments on the patterns of our services. So that is number one. We pray for pray over the scriptures, pray for our leaders, so that God should reveal the truth to them. Because sometimes they are human beings, they may miss it somewhere um, sometimes, and we can help them to pray to, to pray over the over the scriptures and present the matter in the presence of God and number two if we have the opportunity to to discuss it with them so we can go ahead and discuss it with them and before we go ask the Holy Spirit to lead us so that we don't have any and uh, you not make any divisions in the body of Christ. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay. Yes, Sid, you can go ahead. Ma'am, I just wanted to say that there was a certain woman in Kerala. She was from a Catholic background. But when she read about Protestant that we are believing in Holy Spirit, she came to this side, the Protestant side. Then what happened? All her family was against her because she has chosen a different belief. So I just, as we read in the Titus 2, 7 and 8, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good work in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, in, incorruptibility, sound speech. And in this verse, as we have seen, that this woman was also showing the God's character. She was believing, she was reading Bible, and she, she was not kept on blaming that your denomination is wrong, your denomination is wrong, you should not do that, we are believing like this, you are believing like this. She was keep on showing them what is the God character, like a new, what is a New Testament. She was displaying the New Testament and she was kept on praying for this family. And when in four years, his father, the church father and the whole community and the whole congregation, they removed the St. Mary name and it became the whole congregation became the Protestant church. Today in Kerala, they are speaking whole, they are speaking in tongues and through that lady's prayer, the congregation, which was a Catholic church, has now converted to a Protestant church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what I just wanted to say, like, if we have found truth, it is not up to us that we are telling them that you are wrong, you are wrong. As Paul also said, he went to a new faith. He was not blaming to the people of Athens that you are wrong, even though he was complimenting them that I have found something that your faith in your faith, whoever you are preaching, you are praying, you are praying with intensity and you are praying with accuracy. So what we have to do is we have being a Christian, we have to love them. We have to teach them. But we, as there is a difference between them and us, what we can do is we can pray, as Pastor Nancy has told, we have we can pray and we can intercede for them. God in his time will bring them back and will bring them to light and he will sanctify them. Yes, you're right. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Sid, for sharing. We also have uh, Paul Ivotu. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, to me, the Bible is a supreme, the, the, the truth that comes from the Bible, the word of God, is a supreme word, it, it is final, denomination comes later. So when you find the truth in the scripture, go by the truth. If you can change, if you can preach to the denomination to change, let them change. If they cannot change, you stick to the truth, don't mind about denomination. Denomination is second. The truth that comes from the scripture is the word of God, and that is final. That is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Jeffina, you would like to add on? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is something that I have experienced in my life, like due to denomination, and uh, there were some traditions, and then on the other side, there were truth. So I don't want to tell you all what's the denomination and everything else. But suddenly a pastor came and then he said, uh, if you have to get communion, even though if you're baptized, you have to baptize from me. And then only I'll give you the communion. Mm -hmm. So it, it really affected the whole church. Uh, some people were from different backgrounds and they got saved just right now. And it really affected the whole church. So it's like, it's not something that... The, Come on, communion is for everyone. Jesus' blood and his flesh is for everyone who believes on him, who baptized. And he said, you have to go through some classes. You have to learn something from me. And I should be the one who should give you baptism. And then only you should be taking communion. So it really created a great rivalry in the church. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just that people stood for truth. I see that. Some people started praying together for the pastor. And then some people, they left the church so that they can find a better one. So I think both of them are right. Like, you know, you, we have to stand in the truth. And that's the matter. So when it comes between truth and denomination, do what makes you comfortable to stand for the truth. You can either pray for the pastor, pray for the church. Some people, they have lived in the church for so many years. And suddenly, when the church changes, they don't want to go from where they have spent all their lives. So they started praying for their church, praying for the pastor, praying for his mindset and praying for some miracles to happen. 
and then people they newly came and they thought this is something that is against the truth and they left the church but it all depends on what makes us comfortable to stand with the truth and not there is a hole in every denomination most of the time most of the times every denomination has a hole every denomination has some traditions but it's that we have to stand for truth we we are ne- not here to stand for denomination we are not here to say proud something about our denomination or other's denomination or something bad about other's denomination we are here to stand for the truth and when it comes between truth and denomination truth always wins truth already won and it always will win so that's what i want to share thank you thank you jeffina we also see elisha raised his hand I want to share a practical experience. Um, one denomination I know of. Elisha, can you be a little louder, please? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, thank I, I you. I want to share a practical experience of this that we are discussing. Um, one denomination that I know of um, in their callings, or into uh, leadership, the laity. One of the requirements, it is the, one of the basic requirements is that um, the person must have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, evidenced by the speaking in tongues. So if you don't speak in tongues, you will not be called into leadership or into laity. <laughs> now this is this is something that uh, many people find it uh, a bit problematic in the sense that one it's it forces people not to be genuine about their baptism of the holy spirit some people um will find a tendency to fake the speaking in tongues so that they will have the opportunity to be called into leadership and many people have discovered that this practice is problematic and um, that is the, the the extent of the denomination to the denomination is not ready to depart from it so when you have discovered from scripture that in the callings into leadership this is not one of the key or one of the basic requirements that we should consider to call people into leadership of any denomination and this, this is the case where the denomination holds on to it so dearly and you, you try to stand uh, by the truth in this circumstance what I, 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 w- I would want to add to what my colleagues I have already shared is that you need to or you have to engage the leadership on this matter engage them to know how many of them also find this practice uh, problematic and as not to be in agreement with scripture when you engage the leadership and as the Tina added we pray intercede for the leadership I know that um, Gradually, God would one day reveal himself to them also to make a definite decision on that uh, practice or that teachings that goes on in their denomination. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, each one, for sharing your point of view. Okay, thank you so much. So we will take a quick break. And yes, I see some questions here. We will come back and discuss and we can also move on to the next chapter. So let's take a quick 15 minutes break and we'll come back. Okay, thank you so much. God bless. <laughs> 